Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Ashley Gattel, and I'm here to teach you how to keep your bad team members. Yes, you heard me right. Now, let's assume that you've hired to the best of your ability and that training hasn't been an issue. Is the team member bad, or is it the culture? This is such an important topic to talk about because how many of us dislike having to consistently hire, fire, and lose team members? Yeah. <laughs> Not only is it taxing on your time, but it's also expensive. You want to be performing dentistry, not sitting in your office, searching for a new hire who may end up leaving anyway. It doesn't have to be like this. By truly assessing your culture and making positive changes, you can keep the bad team members and see them for who they truly are. Wouldn't you rather grow your dream team than keep the revolving door of team members cycling? I'll show you how. Perhaps the most important point I will make is this. You are responsible for culture. Whether you're the dentist or the team member, you all have ownership in it. Understanding this will help you create the culture of your dreams. Offices that have the right people in the right seats and that have an amazing culture are more likely to achieve their goals because their team is engaged, motivated, and therefore more productive. I'm very passionate about this topic. I worked in a busy practice for almost four years. I help practices with their culture every day and I use my educational background in industrial organizational psychology to apply psychological theory to practice management. And in our time together, I would like to discuss how to develop the foundation of your culture and how is that related to motivation and productivity. But first, let's talk about leadership and communication. How you communicate with your team is the foundation of your culture. There needs to be what Patrick Lencioni calls vulnerability-based trust. So this is the ability to communicate about personal failures, mistakes, and opportunities for growth without fear from the other. So my question for you is, can your team come to you with personal failures that they've made in the office without fear? Perhaps most importantly, can you do the same? It needs to be reciprocal. Oftentimes, leaders are put up on a pedestal by their team members, and if you're able to be vulnerable and break down those barriers, your team and your culture will be stronger because of it. Now, as a dentist, I know you've got a lot of systems you want to implement, but perhaps what's most important than implementing those systems is how you introduce them to the team. There needs to be an environment that fosters growth, empowerment, and delegation. You have a million things on your plate. Wouldn't you rather be doing what you love, which is dentistry, and delegate the rest to your team and have a rocket? So I've learned along the way that when you delegate something to someone, they're probably not going to do it in a way you find satisfactory the first time. <laughs> or frankly, even the second time. But you have a couple of options. You can choose to empower them, trust in them, invest in their training, and understand that it's going to take a little longer to get there. Or you can snatch it back up, have it done your way, and get to the finish line quicker. You get there quicker, which one's a better investment for your team? The next area I want to focus on is philosophy. What is your mission, your vision, and your core values? I want you to consider, why did you get into dentistry in the first place? It's been a lifelong investment with debt, student loans, opening your own practice. Why did you start this in the first place? And I want you to take that and celebrate it with your team. What are your core values? Your core values are a great opportunity to hold you and your team accountable. We can't simply put them up on the wall and walk away, no. Every day is an opportunity to make an example out of them. It's also a great way to determine if you have a good culture fit. Is there someone in your office that doesn't uphold your core values? If there is, your team knows. Stand up for your team and your culture, because they're worth fighting for. You will lose good and bad team members if your culture isn't being valued and protected. And I want to say this again, because it's very important. You will lose good, high-quality team members if your culture isn't being valued and protected. And I want to explain why that's important, and I'll come back to that in just a minute. So. We discussed how to develop the foundation of your culture with communication, leadership, empowerment, and philosophy. But now I want to discuss, why does this matter? So in dentistry, there is a revolving door of, pay of team members. Turnover is a real problem everywhere. 
If you have an issue with turnover, I want to encourage you, talk to your team. What are their motivators? We're celebrating your why, but what is theirs? Everyone has a different set of motivators, and it's important to understand what those are. If you have the right people in the right seats, but their motivators aren't being met, you can lose them. If you have a group of intrinsically motivated individuals, and they're motivated by culture, and the culture is poor, the revolving door continues. But if you're able to build a culture that you value above all else, you're going to be able to retain your team because you're putting that value and that investment in them. So why does this matter? Motivation is influ influences productivity. If they are motivated, they're going to produce for you and help you grow. If they're not motivated, what's the point? It needs to be a reciprocal relationship. Tur having motivated team members is a much better investment than continuing the cycle. Turnover is expensive due to the need to consistently search, vet, hire, and train new team members who you may likely lose anyway. Wouldn't you rather make the better investment? So this bad team member, it may seem that they're a low producer or that they can't complete tasks, but consider the other factors here. Does this change your perspective? So what does this mean for you? In conclusion, culture, motivation, and productivity are all related. If you do not take a real opportunity to assess your culture and make positive changes, your team will not be motivated to produce for you and you will not be able to grow. If you have an issue with culture or you have an issue with turnover, I don't want you to be discouraged. The reason why I initially stressed that culture is your fault is that when that's the case, you have the opportunity to fix it. If you didn't own it, what could be done to make it better? Now, as a dentist, your mindset may be to be focused on production, and I understand that, but I want to encourage you to change your mindset and focus on your culture and the motivators of your team, because that's what's going to help you produce. I want to empower you to create a philosophy that promotes loyalty, retention, and a positive culture. What changes need to be made in your office? Who is responsible? I would start there. Thank you.